Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Melissa Federhoff. I am the president of the Neshoba Valley Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us today. The Chamber has had a long time partnership with the folks at Mount Wichita Community College, including their ongoing sponsorship of our public policy series. Mount Wichita Community College is home of the Senator Stephen M. Brewer Center for Civic Learning and Community Engagement, which promotes positive social change and healthier, more vibrant communities through innovative programming and partnerships. I would like to introduce Leanne Scales and hear about what is happening at Mount Wachusett that you would love to share. Leanne. Thank you so much. And just to underscore how proud we are to be part of this series. Um, it's, it's extremely important for folks to get together and talk about topics. And the one today I am really excited about immigration plays such a big part uh, in our work here. So I'm really looking forward to the topic today in particular. And what's happening at the Mount, I know when we last met, I was telling you all about the graduations we were gearing up for. So we have successfully celebrated so many, everybody thinks we have one graduation. We have our main graduation. We have an early college graduation, and those are for high school students getting college credit. Then we have, um, a nurse's pinning, a vet tech pinning, and a dental pinning. So our campus has just been alive with celebrations, which has been very exciting. And then to talk about something that's not quite as glamorous, but that's really important, and I want you to know this step that we're going through. Um, later today on our campus, we're going to have our very first preliminary meeting with um, the gentleman who's leading our NETCHI team. And NETCHI is um, an accrediting body. So all institutions of education, higher education and K through 12, go through a voluntary accreditation process. And although it's not glamorous, it's deep work. And we have had a series of teams looking at every single aspect of the college, everything we do from our business office to the more student-centered you know, offices like advising and admissions, which my colleague Marsha works with, who's on the call today. And then it's, it's a look at yourself. So you're self-critical and you talk about what needs to be better. And then you make a plan for how you're gonna address those things that need to be better. And then a team comes to your campus, they have multiple visits, they ask for more data. It's a big process, but um, I'm grateful for it because without accrediting bodies, you know, higher education, it gives us one more layer of credibility. So of course, we're, you know, we have credibility to our students, to the taxpayers, um, but this is one more layer and um, it's, it's a really good process. And I'm looking forward to today. It's our get to know you day with the lead of our NETCHI team. So thank you for allowing us to sponsor Melissa and we look forward to next year too. Thank you. It does sound like a very exciting day. Can't wait to hear more about it. Matt Keswick, our public policy consultant with Keswick Consulting, isn't able to join us today, but I'm sure he would want to do a last minute reminder that if you are interested in joining us at our Beacon Hill Day, today is your day to sign up. Um, let me know if we don't um, have enough interest at this time, we'll probably look at rescheduling. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce, introduce today's guest speaker, Mary Chuang. In May 2015, Governor Baker appointed Mary to serve as the Executive Director of the Mass Office for Refugees and Immigrants. ORI, ORI is primarily federally funded and serves as the Refugee Resettlement Coordinator's Office. The mission of the agency is to integrate refugees and immigrants into the fabric of the Commonwealth. Primarily, primary service provisions for the agency include citizenship, workforce development and training, health programming, and other service provisions touching populations across the lifespan and across the state. Prior to joining ORI, Mary served as the Director of External Relations and Patient Relations at Dorchester House. Mary has served on many boards and commissions, including Boston Human Rights Commission, Governor's Asian American Commission, the Dorchester Board of Trade, and the Greater Boston Habitats for Humanity in Dorchester House. Currently, she serves on the UMass Boston Institute for Asian American Studies Advisory Board in the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development Council on the Underground Economy. Mary also has an extensive banking background and serves as Vice President for Fleet Boston Bank of America, Corporate Community Development Department for 10 years. Without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. 
uh, first and foremost, I like to say how honored I am to be invited uh, by Matt uh, to to join you. And uh, I want to say uh, that it's it's uh, it's truly, truly is uh, an honor uh, for me to speak uh, to you, especially on the topic that I am passionate about. So I've been in my role for seven years now, uh, doing this work uh, and focusing primarily on refugee resettlement since we're heavily federally funded. Uh, but uh, this morning, I would like to give you just an overview of uh, what ORI does and how we've been able to help refugees and immigrants. Uh, and since we are a small group, uh, I uh, would like to give you, uh, I, I would like to ask that you give me a bit more time to, uh, to share with you detail of uh, our program and services and stop me if you think that um, you already heard enough and that we can go into question and answer because I would like it to be interactive. Uh, and um, and that it, it's uh, useful uh, for you to uh, to, um, to to hear uh, from me rather than a waste of time. So <laughs> thank you so much again for having me. Uh, so the overview of ORI uh, and the population serve and the demographic and service area um, and then benefit and uh, services that ORI provides. So I would like to ask that Melissa help me uh, uh, upload my PowerPoint. Uh, presentation and uh, we can just uh, uh, glance through it uh, since uh, you already knew uh, pretty much the mission of uh, our office. So again, is to promote the full participation of refugees and immigrants uh, to become self-sufficient individual and family uh, in the economic, social and civic life of the Commonwealth. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, and uh, this is just to show you uh, the map of all of the uh, community partners, the service providers, we call it, that we contracted with to do to provide direct services uh, to refugees and immigrants for many uh, different federally funded and state funded uh, programs. So they're located throughout, as you can see, uh, the map of the um, of Massachusetts here. Um, OK, thank you. And so eligible population that we serve are refugees, asylees, Cuban Haitian entrants, uh, victim of human trafficking, special immigrant visa holders from Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, Emirations, uh, uh, the Afghan humanitarian parolees and Ukrainian uh, humanitarian parolees. Thank you. Uh, so uh, if you look at the history of the um, changes over the years uh, from 2019 to uh, 2022, you can see the refugee admission ceiling changes a bit. Uh, so uh, you could see the number here. Um, so I like to uh, emphasize the fact that uh, for the current year uh, of 125,000, President Biden set the ceiling. Uh, hopefully, we're going to reach the ceiling, but uh, uh, but uh, according to the Department of State and, and all of us, uh, realizing that there are a lot of challenges, we're not going to meet the ceiling of 125,000. Um, uh, why that is? Because, uh, you know, uh, it would take years to rebuild uh, um, the infrastructure in order to support uh, resettlement uh, for refugees again. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, for uh, the current year, we projected arrival for Massachusetts, you can see from different uh, categories here. For overseas refugees and SIV, um, we projected uh, to serve 1,397 and other eligible individuals, 985. Uh, this is including uh, the 715 of the Haitian entrants. And for the uh, Afghan humanitarian parolees, let's just call the AHPs. Uh, Currently, we serve, uh, we already welcome into Massachusetts 1,967. Uh, so you have heard um, uh, how many uh, have been coming here. We wanted to be sure that you have the accurate data according to Department of State. Thank you. Uh, and for the Ukrainian, uh, we also uh, uh, projected uh, to serve 1,079, but right now uh, we're, we're not there. Uh, we only have a few hundreds. Thank you. Uh, so for the nationwide arrival, uh, the federal fiscal year, uh, you know, begins October 1st and, and, and on um, uh, the end of September. Uh, so currently, as of October 1st to May 31st, in terms of refugee overseas, we have 12,641 
and for the SIV is 3,396. Uh, and um, for the uh, other category, uh, we uh, could pull as of the end of April for the asylees, 7,014. Cuban Haitian entrant is 2,485. And victim of trafficking, 1,171. And for the, uh, the AHP, uh, as of the uh, uh, from October first, uh, you know, to June right now, um, we have seventy one thousand uh, four hundred and nine. Thank you. Okay, so at the local level for Massachusetts, uh, fiscal year twenty two for the arrival, as you can see here, we have a different um, number for each different categories. Uh, refugees two hundred forty eight. Uh, the uh, refugee secondary migrant, they migrated uh, from other state to here. There's just one individual for SIV 18 for the AHP, uh, 1,958 and asylees at 23. Cuban Haitian entrant is 488 and the certified victim of trafficking is six. So that brings a total of 2,692. Thank you. Uh, so we receive weekly report from the State Department uh, for the, uh, the, the Afghan uh, parolees. And so you can see the detailed uh, breakdown of uh, where they are in terms of the city and, um, and the number. So that, that's just the detail uh, if you want to know where they are exactly. Thank you. Um, so the majority of um, the refugees residing in eastern Massachusetts, which, which is 53%, uh, and 25% for Central Mass, and 21% for um, Western Mass. Thank you. So in terms of uh, benefits and services, uh, again, we coordinate and supervise for the administration of the services for refugees and immigrants. Uh, we always uh, be sure uh, uh, to um, show the refugee how welcoming we are. We provide them with the welcome kits, uh, which uh, has the letter which governor, lieutenant governor, and secretary uh, of uh, health, health and human services uh, uh, jointly signed. So thanks to Governor Baker for uh, taking the lead in, uh, in uh, um, uh, sending out welcoming messages to, to these newcomers. Thank you. Uh, in terms of benefit, uh, the uh, all refugees will get the CAS assistance for up to 12 months. Uh, this has changed from just months ago. Uh, it used to be just up to eight months. Uh, and wh why I said up to is because uh, once they uh, get uh, employed, uh, the, their CAS assistance will be terminated. So it depends on uh, how fast they can get the job, uh, then the, the, the CAS assistance um, will be terminated. So, but they get uh, up to five years of cage management, but the focus has always been on the first year of their arrival. So in terms of the uh, health assessment, um, we uh, refer to uh, primary care, uh, behavioral and special, specialty care for refugees. Thank you. Uh, we serve youth and, uh, and, and elders, uh, so uh, they all are served up to five years, for, uh, but for the youth program, uh, we have different uh, program uh, to uh, gear toward uh, serving youth. And so we call it youth adjustment, youth mentoring, and, uh, and school impact. Uh, and for community support, it could be anything. Um, could be translation uh, services, uh, could be uh, anything that uh, people need, but only for up to five years. Thank you. Uh, so we have contracted with uh, many community partners uh, to provide uh, health information, uh, English language training, and uh, we have programmed to help unaccompanied refugee minors. Thank you. Uh, the state funded programs uh, are citizenship for the new American, and we serve uh, permanent um, legal, legal permanent resident. Uh, only uh, for financial literacy. Uh, this is for anyone uh, who resides in Massachusetts, refugee, immigrant, resident, uh, and some resident. The Puerto Rican evacuees. Uh, that that's the um, the the resident that we uh, uh, had to help 
uh, outside of refugees and immigrants. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, for financial literacy, why uh, we uh, I wanted to focus uh, on this a little bit uh, was because it's new. Um, uh, under my uh, leadership, uh, we implemented this program, realizing that there's a gap in services. So we raise fund in order to uh, implement uh, this program, and it will be uh, for five years now, uh, and it's now state funded. So today, um, actually, we already served 3,330 as of yesterday. Um, but uh, from this PowerPoint, I just want to give you a snapshot. We conducted hundreds of uh, workshops and in 10 different uh, languages. Uh, we partner with 11 service providers throughout the uh, state uh, to do so. Um, so for the fiscal year 22, we already uh, provided, um, like I said, um, uh, many um, uh, online workshops and some are in person uh, to uh, 282 participants in, in 10 languages and contracted with uh, 10 service providers as of uh, the end of May. Thank you. Uh, and again, uh, employment, uh, it's up to five years. Uh, and they will get tailored English uh, language training, vocational skill training, recertification. Uh, this is to help them uh, with a little bit with uh, the, uh, um, uh, uh, the driving lessons uh, and, and pay for the fee. Uh, and um, uh, basically just to be helpful uh, to, uh, to newcomers. So uh, and then we help them with job placement and upgrade. Thank you. The Afghan Emergency Assistance Program. Uh, now, first of all, for the first time, uh, the governor and state legislators uh, funded uh, the uh, refugee resettlement agencies, and there are six of them, uh, realizing that there are so many uh, Afghan uh, parolees coming to the state. Uh, the state uh, wanted to be sure uh, to help the uh, both the service providers, the refugee resettlement agencies, and uh, the clients, which is the Afghan uh, parolees, uh, $12 million uh, to support them. Um, and so we contracted with six uh, resettlement agency, uh, and uh, the services include uh, the direct assistant and immigration assistant, 37.5%. Uh, if you look at uh, exactly uh, what does that mean? Uh, so the funding, uh, uh, go to a direct assistant and immigration assistant so that they can adjust their immigration uh, status. Thank you. And uh, the, the, the state governor legislator did the same thing. Uh, they dedicated 8 million to support up to 1600 Haitian um, uh, that reside here. Uh, they, 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 they arrive uh, through different qualifying uh, uh, statuses, uh, but the temporary protected status um, uh, that you could see uh, and that we contracted with uh, one Haitian serving organization uh, called the Immigrant Family Services Institute uh, to uh, provide direct assistance and immigration assistance also uh, to the Haitian. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, uh, we are also uh, happy that uh, because of the Ukrainian situation, uh, the governor and the legislators uh, uh, once again uh, supported uh, 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 refugees and immigrants uh, uh, and not limited uh, to just uh, uh, the Ukrainian um, to um, uh, allocate 10 million uh, to support services for, for refugees and immigrants overall um, through the six three seven agencies. Thank you. Uh, our new uh, services, uh, which is federally uh, funded, um, are Refugee Mental Health, which we partner with uh, the Department of Public Health. Uh, so this way they can uh, provide, um, um, uh, focuses on uh, increasing on mental health literacy and uh, coordinating for mental health uh, um, uh, services and uh, basically organizing a wellness group and uh, dedicating the money uh, for housing assistance, realizing how expensive it is to uh, resettle in Massachusetts. So the funding uh, will um, focus on housing assistance. Thank you. Uh, they also uh, want to be inclusive in serving um, a newborn to five-year-old um, uh, through the early education and care. 
uh, and fund the school uh, that they call a school to school initiative uh, to, uh, to, to help support the local school um, and that we uh, partner with Department of uh, Elementary Secondary Education, uh, which is DESI. Um, we also, through the uh, citizenship uh, for the New American, the CNAP uh, program, we uh, expanded to serve uh, oh, the N600, it, it, the application for citizenship for children. Uh, the N400 would be for, for the parent, but the N600 is for the children. So we expanded uh, to serve both parent and, and children uh, for citizenship services. Um, I'm sure you already uh, knew uh, some of the barriers to uh, successful resettlement and integration, uh, 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 but I just wanted to uh, run uh, the list for you, just so that you uh, you you are more aware of uh, others' challenges in case you haven't thought about uh, of what these uh, newcomers have been going through. Um, and, and that are facing. So uh, limited ling English proficiency, history of drama, substantial medical issues, long stay in refugee camps and lack of exposure to education, technology, et cetera, um, high cost of um, uh, and unavailability, unavailability of housing and trouble navigating the US system, you know, health education and other services in general. And then lack of transportation in many areas, driver licenses, weather, culture, food differences, lack of supervision of youth while parent at work. Uh, oftentimes, the parent work more than one job. Uh, kids are left at home, unsupervised. Path to citizenship, uh, anti-immigrant sentiment. Okay. So um, I was wondering whether you would be asking me uh, how can you be of help to the Ukrainians since they are the recent uh, uh, refugees, uh, parolees um, uh, that arrived here. Like I said, again, we do not have um, uh, more than thousands of them coming here uh, as yet. Uh, we're waiting. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, if you would like to help them, there's so many ways uh, to help. Uh, the obvious would be, you know, to donate to volunteer for even the local refugee resettlement agencies, the six agencies that I uh, mentioned, or you can uh, 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 um, choose to help uh, the USAID uh, or the Red Cross, uh, because they always uh, like to, um, uh, to solicit anyone who's willing to um, provide any support uh, that each uh, is able. Uh, you can volunteer, you can donate. Um, so you, you can teach English for the local uh, resettlement agency. Um, uh, do anything you're able to. Um, donate furniture, uh, basically anything. So I just want to be helpful in uh, putting this information uh, here for you in case uh, that question come up. So thank you so much. I think that's, uh, that's the end of what I have to say. And we have more time for uh, Q&A. So I appreciate uh, your time. And I hope that the information has been uh, helpful to know a bit about uh, ORI. Sorry, I was muted. Absolutely. That was, that was great. One of my questions was going to be, what could we be doing? What could the communities, what could be the, what could the businesses be doing to um, help and support? Um, Leanne, I see that you have your hand raised. Yes, um, and, and I know you spoke about, um, you know, e you know, learning English and that people can volunteer to teach it. And I know here at the Mount, we have, you know, long waiting lists for uh, any ESL programs, particularly those that are free. And so immigrants don't usually have a lot of resources to pay for that kind of. So I would love to hear about any legislative efforts or um, as to Melissa's point, what can we do? Because that seems to be one of the, the biggest barriers. Yes, and I totally uh, uh, realized that uh, when I uh, f first joined uh, the agency. Uh, so, uh, so this is why we we we, we try to gather uh, resources, it, you know, in information, and we put on our website. Uh, well, we need to update it because uh, every year the information changes. Uh, we 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 know that there are not enough ESL classes uh, for for immigrant um, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, enroll in um, uh, or to access. Too. And so we um, 
we try to reach, well, we did reach out to Department of Education to see if there's any way where they can uh, give more funding uh, for us in order uh, for, for, for us to contract with, uh, with, uh, with, with any institution or any individual that would want to focus on creating more ESL uh, program uh, training uh, to support them. Um, so I think that uh, uh, in terms of uh, the funding, the, the, the uh, uh, Department of Education received uh, a lot of funding from federal government uh, also uh, for, for, for that uh, particular um, uh, uh, training. Uh, I, uh, I do not know the detail of exactly how much uh, that they have received, uh, but realizing the federal government, especially through all art, they realize that uh, if there's so many refugees coming uh, to the country, they have to put more support uh, taught ESL um, uh, training in, in, in particular and, and others uh, like case management and employment and, and so forth. So it, it has been a wonderful year with so much money uh, to be had for the resettlement, uh, resettlement agencies to focus on all, that, all, on all of that. Like I said, um, uh, employment, healthcare, um, uh, education, et cetera. Great. Carolyn. Hi, thank you. That was a great presentation. I really appreciated it. Um, I work with Habitat for Humanity. So generally we'd be working with um, immigrants once they get legal status. But um, on the side, I'm also working with a neighborhood support team, supporting a couple of families, Afghan refugee families. And I thought their um, status had changed from parolee. Yes, Are they yes. still... Uh, well, uh, until they have their immigration status changed to uh, to um, to permanent uh, to legal permanent resident, uh, uh, otherwise uh, they are parolees. Uh, so you you see at the beginning in terms of the the Afghan uh, the federal government uh, Department of State uh, basically didn't know how they uh, want to help. And of course, when you want to help, it has to do with uh, looking at the infrastructure and in terms of, and especially the the, the funding for it. Um, uh, and, and knowing that because of the, uh, uh, the, the number of service providers, the resettlement agency have been uh, reduced in terms of uh, the staff size, right? They staffed down uh, when there was the F and flow of, uh, uh, of, of less people admitted. So um, it, they, they, they face uh, many uh, challenges. So, um, so they thought, okay, they want to put um, more money to help, especially uh, uh, um, considering them as refugees, uh, then parolees, uh, right? But but because the the, the situation, uh, you know, was just uh, so new and so different, um, and with the pressure of so um, many um, uh, community activists, uh, especially the congressmen, women, uh, the legislator in general, uh, the Department of State uh, have to help them and serve them and give them the benefit as refugees but they are parallel, so they're not considered as refugees. Uh, they get the benefit, but they're not refugees because refugees uh, you know, came into the country with different path. They are extremely vetted. And the situation with the Afghan parolees were just so different, uh, how, how they'd rescue, right? And the, and the relationship with the US government. So, so, so therefore, and because of the influx and, and all of a sudden, so they have to react to it. Uh, so at the at the beginning, uh, they, uh, they they didn't consider the, the, these folks uh, as refugee because they didn't go through the traditional route of becoming refugee. So they're parolees. Uh, so uh, they get the, the 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 benefit and services as refugees, but they are still parolees unless they have their immigration status change to be legal permanent resident and it uh, uh, and, and to become. Uh, asylees rather, right? Refugee asylees. I mean, if they're, they're here now, so so they, they are applying for um, uh, um, uh, asyl asylum. Uh, it's gonna so, take some time for, 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 for that to, to be changed. Well, and that's because we've been working with one of the resettlement agencies and yeah. they are very overwhelmed. So is it just one year for them to apply to be? Yes, they, 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 have, yeah, they, they have one year. Yeah. Because there's just not enough resources to make that happen in a year this is why okay. the, the, yeah this is why the state uh, funded uh, uh, the money uh, to focus on helping them uh, change the immigration status because of that 
you know, through the three uh, state funded, uh, um, you know, dollar that I mentioned, the 8 million, the 10 million, and the 12 million. Do you feel like that's been trickling down the way it should be to, to well, help? You know, you know, I think it, it's very challenging for resettlement agencies uh, to, uh, to, to, um, uh, to work on it uh, as quick as they could be, because the number of uh, um, um, lawyers uh, uh, that are available for them to work with. So they're hiring uh, lawyers right now. Uh, uh, they have been trying to, to hire more uh, lawyers uh, to, to help with that uh, or recruit a uh, volunteer uh, to, to help with the uh, uh, with the application uh, uh, for uh, the uh, these uh, asylum seekers. Marsha. Hi, thanks so much. So I'm curious about um, if there are any bicultural and bilingual employment services that ORI offers. I work with a lot of refugee college students and they often come in seeking career resources for their non-student family members. And I'd appreciate learning about any, you know, career service referral opportunities specific to Central Mass, if there are any. You know, uh, so we contracted with um, just a handful of uh, uh, agencies to help uh, focus this on, on employment. Uh, and um, uh, they are Jewish vocational services, Accenture uh, in, in Worcester, in Central Mass. Uh, so Accenture has been uh, the key organization uh, that, that uh, contracted with us uh, to, to do so. Um, so I think if you are in Central Mass, uh, if you can uh, work with Accenture, uh, they have different uh, job training, training program and uh, they also place uh, a refugee immigrant into jobs. And so uh, I haven't... Um, um, ask them if they have uh, uh, more than uh, just uh, uh, placing folks uh, you know, into jobs and provide a few uh, job training. Um, I, I would uh, recommend that you reach out to them and ask them for the specifics. For sure, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> Lots of great stuff. Wow. Um, what can we do um, as a society to work on the anti-immigrant sediment? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think it's uh, key, the key is outreach and education, uh, right? It's making sure that, uh, that people are aware of, of their rights and that they should be as welcoming uh, because uh, uh, newcomers contributed to, uh, to the local economy. Uh, they work, and especially uh, during the pandemic, uh, many of us uh, have the privilege to work from home while these folks are in the front line. Uh, and so, um, so they're contributing, they're, they're helping us. So I, I think it's putting out the positive messages of their contribution and that they should be, and that we, you know, we should be more welcoming. I, I think th this, this would help. Um, so it, it, it's telling your friend, telling everybody around you um, uh, that, that we should uh, uh, consider uh, helping uh, rather than uh, um, untying um, because of the differences that we do not know about. Uh, and it, it, it would be a wonderful thing uh, to, um, uh, to, um, to listen and to, give, uh, to, to have an open mind uh, to, to accept uh, people that are new. So yeah, um, for, for, for me, um, every year before Christmas, uh, we have the refugee town hall meeting. This is one of my way to reach out uh, to be welcoming to uh, the, uh, the newcomers and asking them, um, uh, well, first is to let them know services that are available for them uh, and to provide that access in terms of, you know, having a guest speaker uh, coming in from different, uh, department or, or, or organization to talk about benefit and services that uh, they provide. So th this way uh, is resources in general that they should be uh, more aware of. As you know, uh, case managers uh, from resettlement agencies, they're very overwhelmed uh, with the, the daily uh, support that they have to provide uh, to many, many uh, clients uh, at the same time. So. Uh, especially with the uh, with so many people coming in uh, so, so quickly in, in, in a short time, 
um, they they just overwhelmed, and there there are not enough uh, people uh, to, to help uh, with, uh, with with the need that people are looking for. Um, so so I really uh, um, think that it is important uh, for for us to uh, to reach out and and to tell people uh, that that we're here, uh, you know, to help um, and uh, provide that uh, access in general. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have another question or a last minute question or thought they want to share? All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Mary. This was this was fantastic. Um, really, really enlightening for me. Um, and, you know, again, I think we really need to obviously we really need to work together on the message um, of, of, you know, welcome being more welcoming and supportive and every, anything we can do. So we will share those resources um, that you shared in your PowerPoint. Um, I am so appreciative of you joining us this morning and sharing your sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you, thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you to each and every one. For your attention. And thank you. And thank you, Mount Wichita Community College, for sponsoring this um, series. We'll keep you posted. Thank you. We'll keep you posted on our next um, egg, Eggs and Issues Public Policy um, event. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.